Jnanakosha Vedas Samavedam by pact Jnanakosha a Sastrapedia of Vedic knowledge Upanishads Samaveda based Upanishads Om Ganana Antwa Ganavadigam Havamehe Kavin Kavina Mopotra Vastamam Jetara Jem Brahmanan Brahmanat Patanat Runman Nati Vipida Sadhanam Maha Upanishad Transparent like a hundredth part of ether, partless as manifested in those who know. Ever aware of the soul self of all that is pure is empirical life. This spirit neither sets nor rises, neither rises up nor lies, neither goes nor returns. It is neither present nor absent here. This spirit has a flawless mode of its own, indubitable and impropolis. At the very outset purify the disciple through excellence such as mind's tranquility, restraint of sense organs, next impart to him the teaching that all this world is Brahman, the purified though. One who teaches an ignoramus or half-vacant disciple that all this is Brahman will in effect plunge him in an endless series of hells. But a disciple whose intellect has been well awakened whose craving for objective enjoyments have been extinguished and who is free from all expectations, is rid of all impurities born of near science, the wise teacher and the wise teacher may instruct him. Like its effluence, where there is light, like the day where there is the sun, like the fragrance where there is a flower, so is there a world where there is the spirit. When the viewpoint of knowledge is purged, when the dawn of the awakening spreads vastly, this very world will cease to appear or as real. Established in yourself, you will realize aright the strength and weakness of the flood of my words. You will realize it by the highest mode of nescience that spurs the effort to wipe out the sphere of the petty self. But by it is one the knowledge that consumes all errors. O Brahman, one missile puts another out of action. One flaw destroys its opposite. One poison may be neutralized by another, an enemy may destroy another. Such is the wonderful riddle of element that pleases through self-destruction. The real nature of this riddle is not perceived. As it is observed, it perishes, observed with the flaming imagination whose content is, in truth, it exists not at all. He who cherishes with the creative and liberating imagination the thought that all this is spirit, that the perception of difference is near science, should renounce this in all possible ways. Sage that ultimate status which is said to be imperishable is in truth not one. Twice born sage speculate not as to whence this near science has arisen. Speculate rather on how shall I destroy it. Once it is dissipated and dispelled you will cognize that status. That integral status whence this maya has come and how it has perished, therefore try to treat this abode of diseases, so that she may not subject you again to the sufferings of the birth. The sea of the spirit shines for forth in oneself with its splendid inner vibrations. With a certitude mediate inwardly that is homogeneous and infinite. The power of the spirit in the sea of the spirit is a slightly agitated state of the latter. 
like a wave in the sea that pure power shines forth there just as the wind automatically blows in the sky in the same way the self is itself by its own power becomes mobile that omnipotent deity flashes forth for a moment whose potencies of space time and action are not enhanced by any means who is preeminently established in her infinitude being fully conscious of her own essential nature and comprehended she brings into being a finite form when that supremely enchanting deity brings forth that infinite form other ideas views names number follow her the individual self is the designation of this form of the spirit o brahman it is the basis of space time and activity and its forms are rooted in manifold mental constructions he the knower of the field generating latent impressions again assumes the form of egoism the tainted egoism as determiner is called intellect which imagining forms becomes the base for cognition with its profuse imaginings the mind slowly is sense organs the wise deem the body with its hands and feet nothing but the senses thus indeed in stages descends the jiva bound by the cords of imaginings and impressions and encompassed by a multitude of suffering the potent spirit thus degenerating into dense egoism passes voluntarily into bondage as a silk worm in its cocoon and like a lion in chains becomes totally dependent finding itself within a net of its own imaginings and nothing more sometimes mind sometimes as intellect sometimes as cognition sometimes as action sometimes it is egoism and sometimes it is held to be what is thought sometimes it is called prakriti and sometimes it is held to be maya sometimes it is designated a flaw and sometimes refer to as action sometimes it is proclaimed as bondage and sometimes accounted the eightfold case sometimes it is said to be avidya and sometimes it is identified with desire bearing within itself as it seeds the fig tree this entire empirical sphere that fashions the cords of craving the jiva is verily a tree sans fruits o brahman like an elephant stuck in the moras is the mind consumed in the flames of worries crushed by the python of rage attached to the waves of the sea of lust and oblivious of its own grand progenitor rescue it thus are the jivas living beings phases of the spirit and established through bringing the empirical sphere into being their forms in lakhs and crores have been assigned by brahma numberless were born in the past and even now are being brought forth on all sides others also will be born like multitudes of water drops from a waterfall some of them are in their first birth others have already had more than a hundred births yet others have already had countless births some will have two or more births besides some are born as subhuman and superhuman being gifted with music and knowledge some as mighty reptiles some of these living beings are to be identified with the sun the moon and the lords of water others with shiva vishnu and brahma some divided themselves as brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas sudras others with grass herbs trees with their fruits roots and winged insects jivas are also to be identified with trees like the kadamba the jambira the sama tala and tamala and with mounds like mahendra malaya sahaya mandara and meru and with the seas of salt water milk ghee and sugar cane juice and with the vast quarters and fa 
fast running rivers some of these both high above the earth some descend and again fly upward hit ceaselessly by death as though they are balls hit by the hand these jivas are ceaselessly struck down by death as balls are by the hand having undergone thousands of births again some unwise ones despite discrimination fall into the turmoils of worldly life the principle of the self under minded by space time by virtue of its power just sportively assumes a body spatial and temporal possessed of innate tendencies various orders of living being itself is the supreme that becomes the mind that is unstable and inclined to construction and dissolution in the beginning in a moment the constructive power of the mind fashions the transparent image of space inclined to own as its essence the seed of sound then becoming dense by the process of gross vibrations that mind brings forth the vibrations of air inclined to own the seed of touch of these two space and air the basis of sound and touch by intense repetitive frictions it generated the fire then the mind enriched by these three including rudimentary form proceeds to the notion of pure liquidity and instantaneously becomes aware of the coolness of water followed by the perception of water the mind thus enriched by such attributes meditates all at once or rudimentary smell then arises the perception of the earth element next this body and composed and encompassed by the rudimentary element discards its subtleness beholding in the sky a flash like a spark of fire conjoined to the element of egoism and the seed of the intellect this be in the lotus of the elemental heart is tied the purusha shakta due to intensity of earning in it by meditating on a resplendent and embodiment the mind grows grosser as a bilva fruit does through the process of ripening that effulgence in the sky shining like liquid gold in a crucible assumes a form with definite contours by virtue of its inherent nature upwards is the round head downwards the feet of the two sides are the hands and in the middle what functions as the belly in course of time the body in dwelt by the mind gets fully developed and becomes flawless that same divine brahma the grandfather of the entire world gets established in intelligence purity strength energy forms of knowledge and lordship beholding his own attractive and preeminent body the blessed lord the range of whose perception embraces all the three divisions of time wondered what first would make its appearance in this supreme space whose essence is pure spirit and whose limits are nowhere thus wondered brahma whose vision was as flawless as that of shiva in large groups he behold by gone orders of manifestation next he recollected them all in the due order of all their attributes sportively he fashioned by imagination variegated living beings with their unique patterns of behavior the whole constituting as it were a city in the sky for securing their happy state as well as liberation for attaining righteousness love and wealth he set up sastras endless and varied as the existence of the world has been set up by mind in the form of brahma it lasts only as long as brahma with his destruction the world too perishes o best of brahmans in reality nothing anywhere at any time is born as it destroyed all that is seen in unreal give up the idol showing the empirical life a very pit of the serpents of cravings 
knowing this to be unreal, reduce them all to the status of their ground. Which a wish, the city in the sky, whether adorned or not, are the parts of its constitutive case, progeny, what rationale is there for pleasures and pain? Sorrow and not a sense of gratification is in order as regards wealth and spouse in their nourishing state. Who can have a sense of reassurance here as the near sense of delusion gets more and more entrenched? Those very empirical experiences which in their abundance cause a fool to get attached are the sources in the case of a wise man of his dissipation. Therefore, Nigada, with your awareness of truth, cultivate indifference to whatever has perished among the activities of empirical life and accept whatever offers itself. The marks of a man of discrimination are spontaneous, indifference to experiences that do not come of their own accord and hearty acceptance of those that do. Knowing and restoring to the untarnished middle status between the real and the unreal, neither cling to nor fly from the objective realm, external or internal. The intelligence of a wise and active man, free from attachment and aversion, remains untarnished like a lotus leaf unmoistened by water. O oh, twice born, if the glamour of objects turns not your heart, then having grasped what ought to be known, achieved true wisdom, you have crossed the sea of empirical life. In order to win the preeminent status separate by means of supreme wisdom, the functioning mind from latent impression as one does a strong scent from the flower. The superior men of discrimination who board the ship of wisdom cross this sea of empirical life full of waters of latent impression. Those men who know this world as well as that what is beyond confirm all to all things, they neither shun nor see the ways of the world. The, spout, the sprouting of mental construction consists in spirits proneness to objects. The spiritual and the spirit that is infinite, that is the truth of the self and that is universal being. That very sprouting having lightly come into being gradually fills out, developing into the mind, then it promotes inertness like a cloud. Imagining objects as other than the self as it were, the spirit is transformed into a constructive process as it were, just as a seed is into a sprout. Mental construction is indeed the process of putting together of constituents, it comes automatically into being and waxes fast unto pain, never in unto delight. Indulge not in mental construction, in a state of stability, dwell not on positive existence. Persevere in stopping mental construction, thus one never again pursues the trial of construction. By the mere absence of imagination, the process of mental construction dwindles automatically. One act of construction leads to another. Mind battens on itself, O oh sage. Getting off construction abide in the self, once this is done, what can prove difficult? Just as this sky is empty, so is the entire cosmos. Wise Brahmin, just as a paddy husk or the black coating on copper through effort is destroyed, so also may the mental impurities of man. As a grain of paddy, the innate impurity of jiva too can be destroyed in ample measures. There is no doubt in that, therefore strive.